Customize PCs. Uh, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about the different variations on PCs that we can create and designing them to the specifications to meet certain requirements for a customer. For instance, we want to build a gaming PC, we want to build a virtualization PC, or we want to build a thick client or a thin client, we have to understand what are the minimum requirements for those type of systems. Now, I will uh, preface this by saying that these are uh, slightly older specifications. If you're going to build a brand new gaming PC, you're probably not going to build it with the specifications we have here. It'll probably be more, a little more increased. But for the exam, uh, these are kind of the, the baseline configurations that we're going to aim for. So as a technician, you're often asked to build or design a custom PC for a specific purpose. Uh, for instance, you may have somebody who wants to make music videos and record music. And so they may have a setup that looks like this. Uh, whereas a standard business user, this is definitely not what it's going to look like. Um, you have to understand CompTIA's guidelines for these different PC configurations to best suit your client's needs uh, for the 801-802 exam and, and the 901-902 exams. So the first one we're going to talk about is a graphics workstation, a CAD, or a CAM design workstation. When you hear CAD, they're talking about computer-aided design. Usually this is done, uh, excuse me, computer-aided drafting or computer-aided design. This is usually done to um, create something like an architect would create building plans for your house using a CAD software. CAM, on the other hand, is computer-aided manufacturing. This is where we're going to design something so that it can then be printed out with a 3D printer, uh, or it can be designed so that it can then be fabricated in a machine plan. For these type of machines, you have to have a very powerful processor because you're doing a lot of detailed 3D graphical work. That's going to require a high-end graphics card as well. You're going to want a lot of memory. So you're not going to have your typical 4 or 8 gigabytes of memory here. You're going to have like 16 or 32 gigabytes of memory. Uh, you want to have an ATX motherboard, the full-size motherboard, right? Because we want to be able to have lots of room for these expansion slots so we could put in dual video cards if needed. Uh, we want to be able to have a full tower so that we can support lots of extra hard drives. Maybe we're going to end up doing like a RAID uh, 0 to give us additional speed as we're doing all this graphical uh, processing. Those are all different considerations that we'll be looking at. So really, big, powerful processors, nice video cards, lots of memory. Those are the kind of things we're going to want for this powerful workstation. These things can be very expensive. Um, if you design a, a good CAD or a CAM design workstation, you could be talking five to $10,000. So these are very significantly priced, uh, very powerful workstations with very powerful processors. The next one we're going to talk about is an audio video editing workstation. So, if you're going to be sitting there at a uh, sound recording studio and you want to record, you know, the next great uh, band, uh, you're going to need to have a computer that can have specialized audio so that it can have really good signal to noise ratios. If you're going to be doing video editing, you have to have specialized video cards that can do faster processing during rendering. For instance, my laptop can do some basic video editing, right? But it's not going to do it nearly as fast as a dedicated workstation would that has a dedicated graphics card that can do all that churning and re-encoding of the video. You want to have large, fast hard drives. Preferably, this would be a solid state drive because they're so fast. But the large part of it makes it very expensive. So therefore, most of the time, you're going to see people use SATA drives, uh, which are just standard rotational hard drives, um, and usually something in the 10 or 15,000 RPM range. So those really fast hard drives we talked about, like the Barracuda series. If you're doing video editing, the other thing that's really helpful is having two screens like this does. So you can have the one, the pre-mix and the post-mix. So you can see the output that we'll, you'll see and what you're currently working on. So the one on the left is what I'm working on. The one on the right is what my output would be. And this gives you a lot more workspace and products on different screens uh, for audio video. So the big things, uh, specialized video, specialized audio, large fast hard drives, and dual displays. So you have that work product and product uh, situation. Next one we're going to talk about is virtualization. And when we're doing virtualization, we intend a host to have two or more operating systems running simultaneously. So for this, we need a really fast processor. And even better than a fast processor is a processor that has multiple cores. So you don't want to necessarily use just a dual core system. You might want a quad core system or an eight core system, like an octo core system, like a Xenon processor. Those will have eight processors. So I can run eight different machines at the same time, right? Uh, and if I have lots of memory, you know, 16, 24, 32 gigabytes of memory uh, with an 8-core processor is going to make a nice virtualization workstation. Gaming, what everybody loves, right? You're going to have these, like, cool cases, right? Because they got to look cool if you're going to play games, right? Uh, but basically, you're going to select the components to give the end user the best experience 
and have the best hardware to defeat the opponents they're playing in the game, right? They want a powerful processor so they can keep up with their enemies. They want a high-end video card and a specialized graphics uh, processing unit that discrete graphics. Um, we looked yesterday at the, uh, what was it, the Titan X card that was a $1,000 video card. That would be a, a pretty cool gaming machine. It had over 3,000 uh, cores inside the processor. Uh, it was pretty neat. Uh, they want to have a good sound, right? There's nothing great about playing a video game if you don't have that bass thumping, right? you got to hear that guy coming behind you. So you want to have that 7.1 surround sound, right? Uh, and then you're also going to need cooling for all of this. If you have a very powerful processor and you have a very powerful uh, graphics card, you're going to need to have liquid cooling to cool all these components down. So for our home theater PCs, what we're doing is we're trying to select components that will fit into our home theater experience, right? So if I'm sitting on the couch, I don't want to have to have a mouse and a keyboard. I want to be able to use a remote control, right? I want something that's going to look like a stereo component, not something that looks like a big tower for a computer. So up here on the top, this doesn't really look like a computer, does it? It looks more like a DVD player. But this is actually an old Windows uh, Media Center PC. And it could run and record uh, live TV and play me media through it like a DVR would. It had a DVD player in it. It had a remote so you could sit across the room and play it. It had great output for sound and did surround audio. Uh, the one on the bottom, this is an older 2011 style Mac Mini. It's about six inches by six inches square and then about three inches in height. And it had a DVD player as well. And it came with a remote and you could hook it up to your TV. It had HDMI output and sit on your TV and, and you could stream video that way. Nowadays, most people are doing streaming media boxes over a home theater PC. But some people still like this stuff. Um, the idea here is you want a low profile case. You want quiet cooling systems because I don't want to be hearing those noisy fans when I'm watching my TV. And you want a great audio video experience. So 5.1, 7.1 surround sound is, is key. Um, you want HDMI for output because that's what our TVs take. So it'll give you good quality video. It'll give you a single cable for audio and video to run to your flat screen. Uh, HTPC, that stands for Home Theater PC. So that is a compact form factor. Sometimes you'll see that written as SFF for small form factor. Uh, they'll, they'll use that either HTPC or SFF on the exam. Um, and then some of these will even come with a TV tuner built in. So you can plug the cable from your, your cable line into this and use it like a DVR. So the next two we're going to talk about is thick clients and thin clients. So a thick client is a standard computer. So you go over to Best Buy or CompUSA or HH Gregg and you buy one straight off the shelf. That's probably going to be a thick client. Um, it's going to meet the requirements for running Windows. It's going to be able to run some desktop applications, do some web browsing, all your basic stuff, right? Um, basically the requirements for this is the minimum required to run Windows. So if you've got something that's got one or two gigabytes of RAM, you know, a couple of hundred gigabytes of hard drive space, a decent processor, that's going to be sufficient for your needs. For a, thick, uh, for a thin client, on the other hand, on the bottom here, we're trying to run basic applications, web and office only. Uh, we're going to be able to do minimum requirements for Windows, and a lot of times these will just use Windows as a way to open a web browser and run all the programs inside of a web browser because they are just really bare bones machines, really, really stripped down. Uh, and the reason why I have a picture here of a, a netbook is because they're an extremely stripped down machine. Um, a good example of this would be like a Google Chromebook, right? Very low processors, very low memory, very little storage, because everything they do is done through a web browser. Everything is done through the internet. A home server. Uh, some people like to have a home server, and they work really well for doing media streaming, uh, file sharing, printer sharing. Uh, you want to make sure you have a RAID array with these because, again, if you lose all this data on here, if the hard drive fails, you're now going to lose all your data on your home server, right? If I take all my computers and back up all my photos to this home server and the home server hard drive crashes, I just lost all my baby photos, right? So instead, we might want to use something like a RAID 1.0, a RAID 5, or a RAID 1 to give us that failure protection. But we also want faster speed, so we might want a RAID 0 in that case. And so a RAID 1.0 will give you the best of both worlds or a RAID 5. The big thing with a home server, you have to have a fast network connection. Because if I have 10 users in my house accessing that server, it has to be able to send out information fast enough to support them all. So, a technician is tasked with selecting components to build a computer that will be used for computer-aided drafting and manufacturing. Which of the following would be the best choices? Should we use triple channel memory, a MIDI sound card, 
a socket 1156 motherboard, onboard graphics, or a socket 1366 CPU? Which two do you guys think we should use? So he says uh, A and E, right? So we should use triple channel because triple channel is the fastest memory. We said computer-aided drafting and manufacturing needs lots of memory and fast memory and a really good processor, right? And the best processor listed here is going to be the 1366, right? Which is an Intel processor because we see the 66.